Welcome everybody. Uh, this edition of Stunt Hanger Video, we're going to be building a scale shoestring. And this, I'm going to enter this in the uh, scale uh, rendition event next year at the Nationals. And uh, John Brodak was kind enough to donate this kit to me. And we're going to put it together. I, I don't know how how much we're going to get on video, but I thought that I would uh, post some things anyway. This morning, the first piece that I built was the rudder, just to see how the construction was going to go with this built-up situation. And it seems to be, uh, you know, pretty straightforward. And uh, kind of followed the uh, instructions given by John. And we're just going to do that again. And it says to uh, to lay the, the things out. And glue them. It's, it's not a big deal. So, what I'm going to do is I'll go ahead and get this done. There's a... I mean, I really don't know how to make it a how-to video to put things together. It's uh, it, it's pretty simple, you know. Just follow the uh, procedures and uh, use a square. Make sure everything's straight and fits well. And uh, as I s stated on my Monado build videos, it's hard for me to teach sanding on the internet. Um, so the first thing that we did was on this is I glued the skins together, a uh, fin one, or fin two, and fin three, and just laid on a piece of wax paper, a run thin CA. I've taken the ribs and uh, punched them out. They're already, it's all laser cut. Take a sanding block and knock off any of the nibs. That's one, and uh, you know, if you guys want to see me, want to be bored through these, uh, you know, I can let the tapes run. But to me, it's uh, it's not really worth it. I would rather show some you know, interesting bit of information like I did with a gold leaf or how to make spinners or wheel pants or anything. All this stuff, while it seems very complicated, is really very simple. It's of the basic skills. And, and I'm really saddened that they don't teach those basic school uh, skills in school anymore. When I was going to school, we had shop class, auto shop, metal shop, wood shop, drafting. Now they don't offer any of that stuff. They're they're afraid somebody's going to get hurt. And uh, the only way that you're going to you know acquire these skills is to, to try and do it yourself. Yeah, you can buy these, but as I stated on the. Uh, on stunt hanger, a realistic number for the last airplane that I built would be way over twenty-five hundred bucks. It'd be five grand at ten dollars an hour. It'd be five thousand dollars. <throat> so when the Yatsinkos uh, ask for four thousand dollars, it's really not out of the realm. You know, it, uh, it it sounds ridiculous, but. Not really, they're trying to make a living. So, I'm going to cut the video. I've talked long enough. This was just the introduction on on what we've got going. I, uh, I started on the elevator stabilizer for the simple fact of this piece right here. This is the fuselage crutch. And I'm going to be building mine electric. And... John has laid these out 
for IC with bean mounts and I need to build this into a box that will accept the battery through the cheek cow and I've been thinking on this and thinking on it and I I know I know I could do it with plywood eighth inch light ply but I don't have any and neither does the hobby shop they're, they're supposed to be ordering it I'll give them a call and see if they got it in I have some aircraft ply but that's way too heavy I, I want this model even though it's a scale airplane I want it to come out at no more than 70 ounces you know 65 ounces would be plenty for this size airplane instead of seven eight nine ten pounds like these guys do there's absolutely no reason for all that weight so that's where I'm at I'll get back with you when I get some things put together and we'll see you in a short welcome everybody um, this is my shoestring build my first scale airplane. I know that I said that I was going to document the building of this entire airplane, but I opted out from doing that because it's it's pretty straightforward, except for what I'm going to show you here. The Brodak kit is absolutely beautiful. I mean, it went together with ease. This is 10 days' work, and. Uh, I have all the major components done. This is the fuselage. Now I'd, I'd like to discuss what I've changed on this. He has it set up for a Sato 72 with beam mounts in it. I'm going to be using electric setup, so I redesigned the fuselage to accept the hard nose electric motor mount. And uh, basically what that is is the, glue the nose ring on and the hard nose motor mount and an end grain balsa wood this way and two triangular shaped blocks on the end. If somebody would like to see uh, how that's done you can look at Bob Hunt's PDF of the hard nose motor mount. Real simple, real easy to do. Uh, that's the first thing that was changed on this model. The second thing that I've changed on this model is because he uses a three-line system, and we're using electric with a radio, the 2.4 gigahertz, I don't have to have a three-line bell crank. So this airplane will be capable of stunt maneuvers as well. So we're putting in a Brett Buck bell crank. And the way that he has it drawn, I guess Pat Johnson drew it up, it has no compression spar. And if you remember my Continental video, uh, I stressed how important the compression spar is, but for some reason this has no compression spar joining one wing half to the other, and it is built in two halves and joined in the center. So I've cut out the center rib as I normally would on a stunt plane, and I've made two compression spars out of 8 inch basswood that will lay up against the beam in this configuration. Not a big deal. One for the top, one for the bottom. The bell crank will be suspended. <coughs> it, it will use ball links. I'm not sure how stunt savvy this airplane will be because it doesn't have flaps. And had I thought about it a little bit more I could have incorporated flaps because it has ailerons on the outside of the wing. And uh, they are cut out and will be functional in a static position only. But if I'd have thought about it, I could have made a giant horn <laughs> and made them flaps. But I'm not sure this. Uh, this thin a wing is going to be real suited for any type of stunting to speak of. But this is the this is the aileron that, that goes on the outboard and inboard side. Um, 
like I say, this is my first attempt at a scale model. And uh, we're going to be changing some other things. As some of my, some of the other guys, or some of the other people have watched my videos on carbon fiber layup. These particular landing gear are out of scale. So I'm going to lay up a set of carbon gear that are in scale. And they'll be stronger and lighter than this. The elevator is a built up 16th inch sheet with ribbing inside. It goes together real straightforward, real simple. Same with the rudder, the fin and rudder. The elevators are solid block, but I see no I see no real need to deviate from that. There's just not much area, and that's what I what I mean by I'm not sure this is going to be real suited for stunt stunts of any type. Obviously, this is a scale airplane, and it's not meant to stunt. But I. Uh, I got a list of maneuvers that you can do and there's six maneuvers you, ha you can choose from and six maneuvers you have to do from a list of about nine and stunting is one of them and I'm pretty sure this airplane in real life would do a loop. I don't know whether whether that will be in the agenda or not but uh, I want to build this certainly light enough and straight enough that I can do just about whatever I want. So what I want to do is I want to see how much we're up to as far as weight goes. Because I've noticed that every one of the scale airplanes that I've looked at weighs a ton. I, you know, I can't believe that, that the scale guys would build them so heavy. So we have a wing here that's 99% complete. It's at six and a half ounces. Pretty good scale weight, or pretty good stunt weight. And we're going to put all the parts on here, and we're going to see, give us a calculation of where we're going to come out as far as weight goes. And I would like to see my scale model under 70 ounces for sure. So we're at 10, 10 ounces, and put the fuselage on it. We're at 15.6 ounces for all this stuff here. So, you know, that leaves a lot of room for finish, that's for sure. And uh, I've got some feelers out to the real aircraft owners to see if I can get some real pictures in real time instead of internet pictures. And, uh, some write-up documentation. There's a whole lot of information you can find on the original airplane. It's been repainted five or six times. It's now in a white circus circus motif. And I talked to the museum about that and they don't have a pattern for it so only photographs would be usable. Uh, looking at the three views that I have of this uh, airplane, there's a chin scoop on this, which will be added. And I think that's going to gain me some more static points for the simple fact there's no head of an engine sticking down underneath the nose of this. So that'll be good. And I thought for the ESC cooling, that's the reason why I've opened up all these holes here is that the, the cheek cowls will be functional. The ESC will sit on the outboard side inside the cheek cowl and they'll be on a magnet so they can come on and off. And then the radio will be on the inboard side on a mount inside the cheek cowl. And of course the battery will be in its normal location here as such. Um, I'm new to this game but uh, I, I don't see what the big deal is. I mean, how hard can it be? So my goal is next year, 
I'm going to enter scale at the nats. We'll see how we do. Be my be my first uh, my first entry. I'll probably take this to Brodax to get John's approval on the thing. I have all his documentation. I've gathered just up a ton of stuff on the shoestring. Uh, what the the uh, instrument panel looks like and the inside of the cockpit and the only thing is I'm going to have to mold up the correct shape spinner and <clears throat> John has one that he uses for static use only I don't like that I I want to put a spinner on it that I can fly with so I'm going to have to figure out how to make a spinner that looks like it's supposed to but I don't have to take on and off and same with the propeller the propeller that I sh show with will be the propeller it flies with I, I just don't want to mess with it I want to get in there set it down and fly it I don't want to have to work on it in the pits or whatever uh, a lot of planning has went on with this for me uh, I figured <clears throat> the best way to put this together is I'm going to slide the wing in as such I'm going to cover the wing first before I before I install it it'll be covered with poly span the whole airplane just for the simple fact it's more durable I almost feel like I'm cheating. I haven't built a kit in so many years you wouldn't believe it. And it is just so easy. I don't have to cut out any of the parts. I mean, we'll go in from the other side. So like I say, it's like, it's like cheating. Because of how this thing is constructed, designed, or whatever, I'm going to have to fish the push rod in from the tail post, and I'm going to use the instead of he he offers a uh, looks like a 16th inch piece of piano wire that you solder together in the center. We're going to go with ball links and a piece of carbon fiber tube, and I'm going to slide that in and through the hole in the back of the trailing edge here and then push it up and there'll be a hole right here underneath the, can the uh, cockpit floor and I'm going to leave that open so that I can go ahead and attach the push rod of course then it'll get the uh, super fill on it on inside and out and so we, we make it a monocoque uh, piece I, I don't want things to, to come apart and on this particular airplane you have to finish the fuselage when the wings in it so the skin goes on after the wings in it so it all fits together tight which is I don't see a big problem in this but it's a super nice kit God, it's just unbelievable <clears throat> I, I wish they I haven't like I say I haven't built kits in so long it's ridiculous so this every piece went together perfect there was a couple of things that I had to make note of that were off on the the laser cutting but uh, it once I make note of it and get it off to John it should be revised on the when the kit is released and it was only in two places and I'm sure it was just an oversight super straight that I used John's wing jig and it came out super straight. It's <laughs> just unreal. I did change up with the nose how we're going to do this. Is this was all going to be block from from this former forward. I'll be sanded to shape and then this will be skinned. And the bottom half of where the landing gear goes, I'm going to have to change because of my carbon fiber gear that I'm going to put in to make it look more scale like. 
So, this is basically where I'm at. Day 10 of the shoestring scale build. Probably in uh, by day 14 we'll have the wing covered, doped, and ready to install. And uh, the, the actual woodwork of the airplane, you know, two weeks tops. Two weeks tops. And then the finishing, as you know when you when you watch me finish, you know, that, that's the longest part. If I'd have thought about this project after I got back to the Nats, I probably could have entered it in our September contest, but we're not looking for this one to be done till end of the year, probably, because the uh, finish will take the longest. And I do want a super nice finish on this one. But 15 ounces. About 100 hours, a little over 100 hours in it, probably. And 15 ounces, so I'm happy. So stay tuned for the uh, shoestring updates. I'm sorry I didn't do a detailed build, but after doing the last one on the Continental, I just found that it's uh, I can build a lot faster if I'm not uh, shooting these videos. So we'll see you when uh, we, we return. Till then, tight lines.